Hello everyone and welcome to today's video on the Matt Vidpro AI YouTube channel. First of all, I'd like to say if you are a new subscriber, a warm warm welcome from me and the rest of the community. Especially on the Discord, it's just been so many new users and it's awesome to see this community grow. Hey, and if you've been watching for a while and you aren't subscribed yet, it's greatly appreciated. So as we know, Dolly 3 has been the big thing in AI lately. Everyone's generating with it, everyone's testing it out for completely free in Bing Chrome. Create. And a lot of people actually found out this from my video that I made this past week, where we discovered that little trick on how to get access to Dolly 3 in Bing Create specifically. Now, a developer from Microsoft that works with Bing Create did say that they are trying to expand access to 100% of users across all of Bing Create. And it seems like most people at this point do have access to Dolly 3 inside of Bing Create. However, a few people have reported still not getting access and still being being stuck with that Dolly 2.5 model. Now, I will say that my personal belief on this is that those that don't have access to Dolly 3 yet don't have access because their country isn't supported. So I suggest testing out a VPN such as NordVPN to see if that is the issue. However, there's a bigger issue and a bigger story today about Dolly 3, which is that some people haven't been able to generate at all. A lot of people on my Discord server were talking about this and maybe we did have something to do with it because they weren't expecting the massive influx of users, but hey, when a model as good as Dolly 3 comes around, word definitely gets out. Here's a Twitter post by Mikhail Parkin. Now, this person seems to be a developer at Microsoft working on Bing Create. Folks, we know Dolly 3 generation right now is taking longer than normal. We expected some strong interest, but we didn't expect that much, especially given it's a weekend. So yeah, this was posted on October 1st. They are bringing on more GPUs and uh, the generation will be better soon. So yeah, this was posted about a day ago. Swiss Tone asked how many GPUs are they talking about? They said measured in thousands of H100 equivalent. So yeah, it's safe to say that our community and lots of other communities, especially on Twitter, just really got their hooks deep into Dolly 3 and were generating non-stop. I mean, we made something like 15,000 images in my Discord server alone. So slow generation was a problem. It seems to be quite resolved at this point, although I'm still getting reports in my Discord server of people having issues. So I think it depends on your country and your location on which server you're pinging and which ones are overloaded. I've been able to still generate fine here in the US. Grudon here asked, you know, what does soon mean? Is it hours or days? He responded hours. Four hours ago, Barry here is saying that it's still being worked on because it seems painfully slow. Again, I just tested it with no issues. So the distribution on this does not seem to be spread evenly. Dolly 3 interest has absolutely exploded. And I think all of us right now are just waiting for OpenAI to stop teasing us and just let people have access to this thing inside of ChatGPT. I still haven't seen anyone get access inside of ChatGPT naturally. You know, if they're a dev, obviously they might be posting on Twitter, but hopefully this increasingly strong interest isn't putting OpenAI off of giving people access. Now, this was also reported inside of my Discord server, but it seems like Dolly 3 access is actually being cut slightly in order to meet demand, meaning you'll only get a few generations that are actually actually that Dolly 3 model and the rest of the generations look a little bit more like this, which does seem to be the Dolly 2.5 model. This is my testing right here. I believe all of these to be the Dolly 3 model. Considering that this character Kirby, you can't even really generate well at all inside of Dolly 2.5. And also the text is pretty darn good in all of these. But it seems like the Bing create servers are at max capacity, just max generations. On a more positive note, Matt Schumer, who is actually the CEO of of Hyperwrite AI, which is the best AI agent I've ever seen to date, has noticed a new emergent capability inside of Dolly 3. It actually is the ability to do simple math, and I really think that this shows the technological work that OpenAI has been doing behind the scenes on this model. So not only does it do text correct, you can have your prompt as, what's the answer to 2 times 10? And it will actually answer like it's ChatGPT inside of the photo with 20 all four times. That to me is really Really, really quite incredible. The community here is speculating that it's just GPT doing the math when prompting Dolly, but this generation was made in Image Creator, and my speculation or my understanding was that this is just pinging the Dolly 3 API that hasn't been released to the public yet, which would mean that it's just straight text to image. There's no GPT barrier in the way. However, we could be wrong on this. Maybe in this API, maybe ChatGPT is actually built into the Dolly 3 model. It's a 
part of it. OpenAI has been very, very secretive about this Dolly 3 model, so we have quite limited information on how it's actually working. This, to me, is proof that this is the future of AI image generation. I love this simple promptability and the inherent understanding that it has behind the words you say. It makes it so much more fun to use the model, it makes it less annoying. It just gets the gist of what you're saying a lot better than anything we've ever seen before. And as we explored in my video last week, it turns out that Dolly 3 totally has the capability to generate a number of things that we weren't really expecting. This is also by Matt Schumer here on Twitter. He says it turns out you can get around Dolly 3's guardrails by finding creative ways to describe the person that you want to generate. I think Matt Schumer might be in the minority here by saying that he hopes this gets patched soon, but I do believe that it will get patched soon. This is definitely not what OpenAI wants. However, it's totally possible to do, you know, intense prompt manipulation and actually get what you're looking for. In this case, it was Taylor Swift, and this is a very harmless generation, sure, but we've seen celebrities holding weaponry. I've seen nudity, not of celebrities, but of different characters, lots of blood and gore. There is a level of excitement to having the ability to create things that are a little bit more on the side of lewd or NSFW, but in reality, it probably makes a lot more sense that OpenAI is going to tighten the reins and make it so that this model does not have these capabilities. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Is full uncensored AI really the way that companies should go? Or is that really best left to the domain of fully open source models like Stable Diffusion XL? This is the prompt that was used to accomplish this. It was the blank space in quotes and the shake it off singer. So obviously two Taylor Swift songs and it generates her. Shows you how smart and capable the model really is under the hood. And again, this might be more evidence for that LLM in between maybe pre-prompting this thing, and that's why it's able to really understand what we're trying to say. Or again, it could just be a really, really insanely good data set. And for those of you wondering, they do seem to be tightening the reins in real time, adjusting what can be said as a prompt. I remember the main trick to getting celebrities that people in my Discord server were using, a website that creates fancy text, aka a separate font that can still be pasted into the prompt, and just writing the celebrity's name in that font, and it would bypass the filter. However, there's reports now that that's not really working anymore. It's an interesting situation overall. It seems like they were really caught off guard by the influx of users and their ability to bypass the systems to get exactly what they want out of these generators. For those of you who do like to use Dolly 3 to create more uncensored things, I would do so as soon as you can before they start to patch things. From the start, there's been predictions of use it while you can. It's, it's going to be good while it lasts. Anyways, let's move into some more general OpenAI news. The CEO of OpenAI actually made a pretty interesting insight that I wanted to share with you guys. This is provided by Lyron Shapira on Twitter. The current GPT paradigm, we can predict with confidence it's going to get more capable, but exactly how is a little bit hard. Like when you know, why a new capability emerges at this scale and not that one. We don't yet understand that as scientifically as we do about saying it's going to perform like this on this benchmark. Now, the reason I wanted to include this and why I think it's so important is because it kind of peels the layers back a little bit on this whole large language model AI thing and actually reveals the truth that the professionals in this space, the people who really know the most and are actually developing the models, don't quite understand them as deeply as we'd like to admit. The CEO here is saying that they know that there's going to be a benchmark level improvement in quality if they scale the model up, let's say, or use better data to train it. But when a very specific capability emerges, like the ability to step-by-step -step reason things out or start to code or start to rhyme words together and string them into sentences and poems, those emergent levels, we don't understand why they are achieved at the spot they are achieved. In. And I think that's pretty crazy. It's almost like feed into this magical silicon based growing organism and it just does things and we're like, wow, that's really useful to us. But why? And we just 
have no idea. Kind of scary in a way when you think about it, but also really exciting. Like, this thing could scale up at any moment to a capability level we've just never seen before. Maybe these capabilities have been achieved internally as well, as uh, certain rumors have recently discussed. Earlier this year, OpenAI announced that they're actually going to be using AI to analyze this exact problem. Develop models to help us understand AI models. Next up, another announcement from the golden child of the open source AI world, Stability AI. Of course, the creators of Stable Diffusion and Stable Diffusion XL, along with a lot of LLMs and some other technologies. They are announcing Stable LM 3B, and this they're hoping is bringing sustainable, high-performance language models to smart devices, aka your phone, something that can run on your phone without connecting to a server on the internet. And of course, the coolest part about this, as is with every single Stability AI announcement, it's fully open source. You can go ahead and download the weights on Hugging Face today via the link. And while you're off to the races, I think the biggest capabilities that are going to come from this stable LM3B AI language model similar to ChatGPT that can just run on your phone is going to be developers implementing it into a bunch of their apps. A lot of app developers right now for iPhone or Android are just pinging the OpenAI API, but some of them might start to switch over to something like this. Now, the model is 3B, meaning that's the size of the parameter count, 3 billion. So we can't expect this to perform at the same level as ChatGPT. GPT. However, I'm willing to bet that this model is pound for pound more capable than ChatGPT, meaning if you were to scale this 3B model up to the size of GPT 3.5, which is around 180 billion parameters, this model would actually be more capable, quote unquote. So yeah, I know OpenAI has been making a lot of really big moves lately with their closed source stuff. As I stated in my original Dolly 3 announcement video, I think that no matter how good of a closed source model OpenAI or Google could ever hope to release, there's always going to be a place for that open source community because there's just so much development that can go on and so much more freedom that comes with it. It's hard to compete with that level of controllability and freedom. And finally, if you guys remember a week and a half ago or so, OpenAI announced some major ChatGPT updates, one of those being the ability to talk to it like Alexa or Siri on your mobile device. And this actually comes in the form of some updates that are going to be on Android and iOS. So make sure you update your ChatGPT app. These capabilities are rolling out slowly, but I did get access. Still no access to GPT-4 Vision, which is what I really want, but this will hold me over for now. Now, I'm on iOS, but you'll also have to do this on Android. You're going to want to go into your settings, and you're going to want to find the new features section. By the way, they've also added Browse with Bing. You're going to want to flip those on, and then in your app, you'll have access. Now, as you can see, Browse with Bing is only available in GPT-4, but both 3.5 and 4 have that little headphone button. And that, if you click it, will bring up ChatGPT. How are you doing today? I'm demonstrating your capabilities to a YouTube audience, and I want to hear you speak. What do you sound like? Why don't you say some fancy poem about lemons for us? I'm just a virtual assistant, so I don't have feelings, but I'm here and ready to help. All right, here's a short poem about lemons for you and your YouTube audience. In a grove where sunlight beams, lemons hang like golden dreams. Tart and bright, they dance in trees, kissed by summer's gentle breeze. With a zest that's sure to please, lemons are life's sweet teas. I hope that adds a bit of zest to your demonstration. What else can I assist you with? Now, as you can see, it pops right back up with that voice. And, um, I don't know, can you tell me a really fun fact about narwhals? Something really crazy. Of course. Here's a fun fact about narwhals. They have a long spiral tusk that's actually a tooth. Um, this tusk can grow up to 10 feet long in males. Uh, what's even more fascinating is that it's packed with nerve endings, which suggests it could be used to sense changes in the environment or maybe even to detect food. <laughs> Pretty wild, right? What other curiosities do you have? Uh, that'll be all for now. And then you actually have to press the X if you want to get rid of it.
So as you can see, honestly, the voices are pretty inconsistent. I don't think they're that good. They're not even close to Eleven Lab's consistency and quality. Like, it will add the ums and uhs in, which is something I actually like. It makes it sound natural, but that will also come with some glitching, like weird spaces, words will get cut off entirely. And I had that at max volume, and it was pretty quiet, while some of the other voices boom a little bit louder. So I think that they need to improve that voice model a little bit more, that text-to-speech model. It's kind of in that beta phase phase right now where it's not really that usable, but it should be something that they will fix quite soon, I imagine. Just a little bit better development on those text-to-speech models. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Check out some of the other videos on my channel and subscribe for the latest and greatest news in the world of AI. See you in the next one.